So welcome back. We have been looking at knowledge structures, you know, which have aggregations and abstraction hierarchies built into them. And one of the interesting things that they gave us is this process of inheriting information from superclasses to subclasses and so on. We have looked at fact that you can construct taxonomies in description logic, but because you are giving logical definitions and the notion of a subclass and superclass is logically defined in the sense that uh, whatever is true about a, a superclass must also be true about the subclass. Uh, the taxonomies there would be strict essentially. So, one does not have to worry about the fact uh, uh, that you want, can override this thing. But in the real world, that is not always the case. So, we often want to construct taxonomies in which overriding is possible. So, there is a possibility that we have to address that what if there is conflict between what you can infer in a taxonomy, how do we handle that essentially. So, we are not taking a logical view here. We are taking a kind of a treating it as a handcrafted structure and we want to see what we can infer from that. So, let us look at this whole idea by assuming that you can have multiple ancestors and you can in inherit from them, uh, but sometimes they may be conflicting in nature, then how do you address the problem. So, both in handcrafted taxonomies and in taxonomies induced by subsumption in description logics, a concept or an individual may inherit features from multiple ancestors. So, sometimes as we have seen, it may not conflict, but sometimes it could conflict also. So, for example, we saw that homo sapiens are a subclass of bipeds as well as of mammals. But there may be a conflict between inheritance from different sources essentially. Then what do we do is the question we want to address now essentially. For example, we saw that Peppy the penguin is a bird. Birds can fly, but penguins cannot fly. But we have arranged them in the same taxonomy, in the same path in the taxonomy. So, let us talk about inheritance hierarchies as formal graphical representations. So, we will confine ourselves to abstraction hierarchies because inheritance is essentially tied up to abstraction hierarchies. And we define this as a graph made up of vertices and edges and it is a directed graph where nodes in the hierarchy will stand for individuals or categories or properties. So, we will not distinguish between categories and properties as we said in the very beginning uh, when we started looking at first order logic that both of them are represented by unary predicates. So, we will also treat them in a similar way as far as reasoning is concerned. So, an edge x y stands for x is a y. So, x could be a class or it could be an individual. So, it is either x is a y or x is an instance of y. So, these are the two kind of abstraction links we saw we can put in frame systems. We will also introduce a negative edge which will stand for. So, this negative edge is represented by this here. X is x not y or something like that. It is a negative edge which stands for x is not a y or x is not an instance of y. Why do we do this? We do this so that it makes conflicts explicit essentially. So, if we had for example, a statement that x is red and x is blue, then we may or may not recognize this as a conflict because they are just belonging to different classes and unless we have additional 
knowledge in the system which says that whatever is red is not blue and whatever is blue is not red, we will not know that there is something inconsistent in the system. But if we say that x is red and x is not red, then it is very clear and explicit that there is a conflict that we are saying that x is red and we are saying that x is not red. So, that is the role that negative edges will play is to make conflicts explicit for us essentially wherever they exist. In practice, one could have additional rules which would identify the inconsistencies. So, here are two networks here and uh, which have conflict in them essentially. So, if you look at the one on the left hand side, uh, it is talking about this individual called Nixon and the left branch says that Nixon was a Quaker and then we know that Quakers are pacifists essentially. And the right branch says that Nixon was a Republican and we know that Republicans are not pacifists. So, this edge stands for not essentially, Republicans are not pacifists. So, we have these two paths going from Nixon to pacifist. One path says Nixon is a pacifist because Nixon is a Quaker. The other part says Nixon, Nixon is not a pacifist because Nixon is a Republican. Which one should we believe in essentially? So, we have on the right hand side another uh, network which is talking about an individual called Clyde. So, first we have said that Clyde is a royal elephant. Then we have said that royal elephants are elephants and then we have said that elephants are grey. But we have also added an edge from royal elephant to grey saying that royal elephants are not grey essentially. So, you can see that both of these networks are ambiguous that we can have both kind of conclusions that Clyde is grey, Clyde is not grey, Nixon is a pacifist or Nixon is not a pacifist. But the two networks are not identical. If you look at the network on the left hand side, it is genuinely ambiguous. There is no way of saying that the left path is correct or the right path has more weight as the case may be. But on the network on the right hand side, which is about Clyde, uh, perhaps we have reasons to believe in one of the two conclusions. So, maybe we might prefer a shorter path which goes like this, which is only two hops for Clyde and conclude that uh, Clyde is not grey. Maybe we want to make sure that we inherit something from the more specific concept essentially. So, royal elephant is more specific than elephant. We know that royal elephants are grey, but there is also a path which is going uh, from royal elephant to elephant to grey. So, there is also ambiguity about royal elephants, but there should be a way of implementing defeasible reasoning in the sense that we should be able to decide as to which of the two conclusions are preferable essentially or we should be able to override something which is said for a more specific thing for a more general thing. So, for example, elephants are grey and we should be able to override that by saying that, but all elephants are not grey. But in the, in the graph, there is uh, scope for confusion because we are saying that royal elephants are elephants and elephants are grey. But at the same time, we are saying royal elephants are not grey. So, how do we handle that? So, we talk about paths in a taxonomy like this. So, here is a random taxonomy that we have drawn. Lowercase elements like A and B are individuals uppercase elements are concepts, concepts or properties as the case may be. So, we have uh, we have uh, various links here. So, they are either is a links or instance of links essentially. So, a sequence of positive edges is a positive path. And that is denoted by 
a positive path starting at A and ending at B if there is a sequence of positive edges and it supports the conclusion that A is a V essentially. So, here for example is the conclusion A is a P in this example because there is a positive path going from A to P. A sequence of positive edges with a negative edge ending with a negative edge is a negative path. So, that is the only kind of negative path we will allow when the last edge is negative essentially. So, in this example on the right uh, going from B to S is a negative path. So, we can say B is not an S, but going from B to T to S to P is not a negative path because a negation of a negation does not make sense and we can see this from an example that if we say uh, that Clyde is a royal elephant which is not a fish and fishes are not mammals would be meaningful would be meaningless because if Clyde is not a fish and fishes are not mammals that does not tell us that Clydes are mammals because when you say Clyde is not a fish essentially you are saying that Clyde belongs to the complement of uh, class of fishes essentially. and that fishes are complement of the class of mammals. So, that does not mean that light becomes mammals essentially. So, if you think about that a little bit you will see that two negative edges uh, like this one, this does not make a sense and you cannot assert, uh, you, you cannot inherit uh, values from there. So, to get around all these problems of ambiguity, uh, Leinstein gave us a definition of admissibility which we will look at. So, what are the conclusion at the end of a valid path? So, remember there are two kinds of paths, one is a positive path and one is a negative path, but are the conclusions allowed or admissible? So, we say that a positive path going from A to V supports a conclusion that A is a V or a negative path also going from A to V, but with the last edge as negative supports a conclusion that A is not a V if every edge in the path is admissible with respect to A. So, all this admissibility is with respect to A that what can we say about A? Now, we want to define as to when is an edge admissible. an edge from x n to v or x n to not v that is the last edge is admissible with respect to A. If there is an admissible path going from A to x n leading up to the edge and it is a positive path, only the last edge remember can be negative. each edge in this path going from A to X n should be admissible with respect to A. No node X i on that same path must preempt the edge which is the last edge. So, what I have written here in, in red is for negative paths, what I have written in black is for positive paths. So, no node X i on the path must preempt the edge going from X n to V which means that there must not be an edge of the kind going from x i to not v essentially. So, that is preempting what the positive path is trying to say essentially. And the third condition is that no edge in the path must be a redundant edge with respect to A. So, let us look at the definition of what do you mean by redundant edge. We say that an edge x y in a path is redundant with respect to A if there exists a po positive path going from x to z1 to z2 to zk up to y. 
So, there is one direct edge from x to y, but there are also another path going from x to y such that every edge in the positive path going from through all these z's is admissible with respect to A and there is no C somewhere in the network and which goes and impinges upon some z i in the path with a negative edge in this example or it impinges upon the last node in the path which is y that we talked about with a negative edge. So, if you look at this example of uh, Clyde, so Clyde is a fat royal elephant, fat royal elephants are royal elephants, royal elephants are elephants and elephants are grey, but royal elephants are not grey and fat royal elephant is also an elephant. You can see that this edge fat royal elephant to elephant is a redundant edge because there is a positive path which also arrives at the same conclusion. What is the positive path? It goes from fat royal elephant to royal elephant and from royal elephant to elephant essentially. And therefore, this edge is redundant and we cannot consider it in our admissible paths. If there was a node somewhere C as shown in this figure here such that there was a negative edge going from C to royal elephant, then this would no longer be redundant. Essentially. Then we can, because now we are saying that either Clyde is a royal elephant or Clyde is not a royal elephant. And therefore, we are allowed to accept the fact that fat royal elephants are elephants. There is no ambiguity about that. So, here is an example of an inheritance hierarchy uh, about three individuals Anne, Bob and Sue and uh, you can see that uh, we can identify uh, some redundant edges essentially. So, going by the definition the edge going from N to P is redundant because there is a positive path N to S to P essentially. The edge going from N to T is also redundant because there is a positive path and to V to T essentially. And likewise, the edge going from SU to R is redundant because there is a positive path going from SU to W to U to R. So, let us talk about admissible edges. So, what you see in green are admissible edges with respect to SU and you can see that we can draw two conclusions about SU. One is that she is an R. You can also of course draw a conclusion that SU is a W and, and SU is a U and SU is a R and that she is also a Q essentially. What about uh, the red edges? The red edges are with respect to AN and you can see that we can draw a conclusion that AN is a P because there is a positive path going from AN to S to P. We can also draw a conclusion that AN is not a P because there is a negative path which is going all the way like this. So, even though we ignore this redundant edge, we still have another negative path which takes you from N to V to T to not P. So, then it is ambiguous. We can also conclude that N is not a Q because there is a negative path going from N to Q. Of course, we can still infer that N is a V and, and N is also a T or an S. So, here is the uh, admissible edges for Bob. You can see that uh, You can conclude that Bob is not a P and you can conclude that Bob is not a Q. 
this particular edge T q is preempted by the edge V not q essentially, it should be V not q. Likewise, in the previous example, I forgot to mention that uh, we can conclude that an is a q because there is a negative path, but we cannot conclude that an is a q. Yeah. We can conclude that an is not a q because there is this negative path here, but we cannot conclude that an is a q because this edge is preempted by that negative edge. So, this is about Bob. So, what can we say about Bob? So, we can say that Bob is not a P, we can say that uh, Bob is not a Q and we can say that Bob is a T essentially. We can define the notion of an ext extension as a credible sub network essentially as follows. If the inheritance hierarchy is potentially ambiguous, then how do we arrive at a set of consistent beliefs for an individual? So, a set of consistent beliefs will be captured in an extension. We define an extension as a sub network that holds a set of consistent beliefs. A network gamma is said to be A connected if there is a path from A to every node in the network so, that is A connected. So, we only select those nodes for which there is a path from A to those nodes. It can be a positive path or it can be a negative path. A network is potentially ambiguous with respect to A if there exists a node X such that both A is an X can be shown and A is not an X can be shown, can hold. In the sense, both are admissible paths. So, a credulous extension of an inheritance hierarchy with respect to a node A is a maximal, that means you cannot add any more nodes to that, unambiguous in the sense that you cannot derive that A is an X and A is not an X, A connected sub hierarchy of that node essentially. So, because it is maximal, you cannot add any other uh, edge to this extension because it would either make it ambiguous or it would make it uh, not A connected. So, this part will hold if for example, you have A here and you have not B here, you cannot add an edge C to that essentially because that would not be A connected because from A to C is not a path. A negative path can only have a negative edge as the last edge. So, this network that we just saw about Bob, you can see that there are two extensions to this. They are both credible in the sense that they are A connected or Bob connected in this case, they are maximal that you cannot add any more edge to that and they are not ambiguous. They are two different extensions. In the extension on the left hand side, you can conclude that Bob is a P, is not a P, is not a Q and is not a U essentially. But on the network on the right hand side, you can conclude that Bob is a P and Bob is a Q and Bob is not a U. But notice that there is an edge which he had not identified as admissible because if you remember, there was this thing which was preempting that essentially. But nevertheless, if we have removed that from uh, the extension, it is no longer uh, ambiguous. So, we have two separate extensions, one in which Bob is a Q and one in which Bob is not a Q. So, on the left hand side, it is the extension in which Bob is not a Q. On the right hand side is the extension on which Bob is a Q. If you had to make a choice, then we would say that the left hand side 
extension is a preferred extension and why is that? Because it has admissible edges only. The right hand side has an edge which is T q which is not in the left hand side extension and T q is not admissible essentially. Whereas, the edges in the left hand side are all admissible. So, we would prefer to believe that Bob is not a q because that is an admissible path uh, in the original network. Uh, but we are willing to believe that Bob is a q if we take this particular extension. So, what are the kind of conclusions that we can draw about individuals here? Is Bob a q or not a q is the question. In one extension he is a q, but in the other one he is not essentially. So, we can think of the following forms of reasoning. One is called credulous reasoning that you accept a conclusion about an individual if there is an extension supporting the conclusion. So, it can be anything Bob is a q, Bob is not a q. In skeptical reasoning we can accept a conclusion about an individual if it is supported by all the extensions essentially. So, all the extensions will agree on this particular conclusion essentially. And in ideally skeptical reasoning, we accept a conclusion in which all the extensions agree, but not only do they agree, they have the same path which is talking about that conclusion. So, these are three different ways in which you can uh, reason with the system essentially. So, in the example that we saw about Bob, which is here. You can believe that Bob is a P, Bob is not a P because that is acceptable in both the extensions and in fact, it is the same path. This is a small network in any case. You can also believe that Bob is not a U because both the extensions agree upon that, but you cannot believe that Bob is a Q or Bob is not a Q because it is not supported by both the extensions. This is if you were to be doing skeptical reasoning. If you are doing credulous reasoning, then you would accept both the conclusion that Bob is a Q because there is an extension which is showing that Bob is a Q. You would also accept the conclusion that Bob is not a Q. So, with that we end our study of taxonomies. The next topic that we will look at is default reasoning, which as we have mentioned earlier is that under the open world assumption there are certain inferences that you would like to make which are reasonable, but which could be defeated later when more information comes to light. So, that is also called as non-monotonic reasoning. We will look at it from the perspective of logic again when we meet next.